Hello, today I'm going to go over renting a mobility scooter for a cruise, although you can also rent it for other things. For this, we are using the Scootaround website. Uh, they're a vendor that I've used a couple of times and have had good experiences with. The website is scootaround.com. First, you select the rental type. We're going on a cruise, and then you give it the port name. This was rented for Galveston, Texas. Next, you select the start date of your cruise and you check the delivery time. It needs to be several hours before departure, of course, and then verify the return date and time for pickup. Once you have all that verified, then click continue and it'll take you to the next page. Here you can verify that your details under travel information are correct and take a look at the equipment that they are offering for rental for that particular date and time range. Also take a look at what the capacity is as far as weight goes, just to make sure you're not going to be stressing the machine more than it can handle. You can see there's quite an array of products that they are offering, not just scooters, but also these rollators, which are quite handy, and transport chairs and regular wheelchairs as well. The rollators are nice for someone who wants to be able to stop and sit for a second, but just keep in mind that you're not supposed to push people on those while they're sitting. Click into any of these individual products to get more information on them. And once you've made your selection as to what you want to rent, you click on the Choose button. And you get more information, of course, here. Take a good look at what these insurance plans cover and whether they are right for you. It isn't a bad idea, though, to make sure that you are protected in case, God forbid, the scooter goes missing or gets broken. Next, you choose which cruise line you are sailing with, and you can see there were quite a few represented. Once you choose the line, then you can go in and choose your specific ship as well. This was on Royal Caribbean's Liberty of the Seas, and... Then you give it the cabin number, the booking number, and whether it is a standard or accessible cabin type. Keep in mind there is considerably more room in an accessible cabin, and they don't like you to leave scooters in the hallway, which we found out the hard way. Once you've chosen what you're going to rent, you see that there was a list of what it was going to cost, and then you are given a contract to sign. And be sure to read the terms of the contract so you know what you are signing before you sign it. Check the amounts, check all the information that you have provided is in there correctly, and uh, just make sure that you know what you're getting into. There are instructions in how to leave the equipment for them to pick up, and where it's going to be dropped off, as well as information on the kind of equipment you may be renting, and all sorts of good information in this, in particular about the use of equipment and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's really important to read all of this. It is sent to you, as I recall, it's sent to you via email. It's not something that comes up on the website, so you can see I'm going from a PDF here. And then when you get all the way to the bottom, it actually has the method of accepting the contract so that you have a chance to go through everything before you actually sign it. You can see it has a section describing the equipment protection plan and if it's you know included or if you decline it, what your liability is. It's good to know what how much these things would cost and whether or not you really want to take that chance. It's on your decision, of course. Just sort of knowing what you're getting into is very helpful, and I found that this being spelled out in the contract was, was useful to me. I'm not trying to encourage you one way or another. I'm just sort of helping you get the information you want, hopefully. The rest of the clauses are... Also things that you want to pay attention to, you know, if you're going by airline and train especially, that kind of thing. I do find that it's more likely they are going to damage it uh, with airlines, at least friends that I've had who have traveled and had wheelchairs with them have had not good luck with the airlines not damaging their equipment. I thought the service issues section on how to contact them while at sea was helpful too. It is important to note the section there that said any compensation is based on the day that they are notified of the problem. So if you do run into a problem, absolutely notify them immediately. Now this video, of course, is no substitute for actually looking through the contract yourself, 
but it does give you some ideas of what to expect. You know, it goes on to some of the standard things where you are promising to pay the rental that you have agreed to pay, which makes sense, and that you're promising to give back the equipment by the end of it. <laughs> well, they certainly don't want you to keep it and not pay them. Uh, then, of course, we have, you know, how to handle the loss and damage and uh, how long you have to tell them that there's a problem and all that sort of things. And it goes through the rest of these. And then you have the accept button. And clicking on this is the same thing as actually signing a contract for them. Once you have accepted the contract, then you are given the receipt. Note, you really haven't rented it until you have accepted the contract. So that is important as the last step. And now you've rented the scooter and hopefully this helped with the process. Thanks for watching. The next video is going to be on navigating Liberty of the Seas using a mobility scooter. I hope to see you there.